All right, we're going to start part four of the Kevin Bond Super Strap build. We're going to bring the neck and the body together. We're going to drill out with a 3 16th bit just to see where my hole is. And then I'm going to come back with a little bit smaller bit and drill out where uh, the neck holes are going to be. So you just want to drill out a little bit smaller hole for the screws to get threaded against. And we'll just start seeing how this feels. We're going to then glue in the fretboard markers for the side, side dots. And we're going to use some glow-in-the-dark material, similar to what we used before. We're going to just take that glow-in-the-dark material, drop it into each hole. Last time I actually used some epoxy and made a mix. This time I'm actually taking the on the dark material and dropping it into the hole so it's this fine powder and I'm gonna take that fine powder put it into the hole and then super glue that stuff into the hole I think I'm gonna get a little bit higher density material than the epoxy and the dust powder whatever I feel like this is gonna give it a little bit brighter it'll be a little bit more powder packed in versus epoxy and then the super glue will seal it in so we're gonna use some glue boost super glue to get this in make sure that this is rubbed in there's no holes or little pockets of air and we'll come back with a wick and the super glue and just wick it in and we'll come back a couple of times actually so we'll do the first initial and then we'll come back and go back and forth make sure I've got enough glue and it's sealed in there from there then we're actually going to radius the fretboard so we're going with a 12 degree radius and we're going to come back and forth a bunch of different times, different grits, different alls. So I start with a smaller Stumac and 80 grit on the edge of the fretboard. I want a consistent taper going, going down the fretboard. And then I'm coming back with the much larger aluminum sanding beam to get it nice and level. And this African blackwood is very hard, and this took a lot longer than I thought versus last time. So we'll start with the 80 grit, and then come back with 320 towards the end after we get this nice and level. I didn't want to do my radius jig on this. I want to do it by hand since I already had it cut and glued on. I didn't want to reset up that jig and route it was unsure of the edge on this and thought it would be easier just to sand it out, which was fine. Just takes a little bit longer, but put in some elbow grease. So all in, I've got about maybe 20 minutes, a half hour to do this right. And every time we do a little bit of sanding, we vacuum this up, make sure that I've got no loading on the sandpaper. We're gonna do stainless steel frets and stainless steel frets are a little bit harder to work with in terms of cutting. I haven't had much problem with getting them level and sanding, but the initial cutting and prep work takes a little bit of work. I have to cut each fret separately, so I size it up against its slot, sand it down, dip it in the water because it gets pretty hot, and then this will allow me to sand the fretboard quicker and not have to cut the frets in the slot which then will bend the tang and ruin the fretboard. So before we glue these in we're going to clean out each fret slot and make sure it's nice and level. Got any dust and stuff that's out of there. And then this is my process for doing fret work. I am going to use some tight bond wood glue, spread it on each fret, drop it in, place it in based on how I had set it up before. Take this then over to my fret press and drop it in. Just press down, make sure it's flat, come back with a wet rag and wipe off the glue. And we'll do this 20 times back and forth. And I'm not going to film that whole process. But I cut it, add the glue, seat it, and then clamp it once it's all done. So I'm going to do a whole run of frets here. And then what I do is clamp it to my sanding beam and that way I know it's nice and level and flat and I can make sure all the frets are pretty much level 
and I don't have to do as much work leveling them out. So I try and do a couple at a time. So glue them, place them, and then press them down. This is me wearing the GoPro, trying to do a bunch of them at the same time. If you haven't made a handy fret organizer, it's nice to have. I just took a scrap piece of wood, cut out 22 holes, numbered each one, and then each fret has its own little home before it goes in the fretboard. And then now we'll press all them in here, kind of like an assembly line. One, two, three, four, whatever we're at here. 12, 13, 14, 15. And then the end of the neck doesn't sit so well in this fret pressing jig. And so you have to pull off the call and just press it straight against the metal. But then I've got all of these pressed at the same time. We'll wipe off all that glue. Make sure these are all nice and in. Last couple need a little bit more love. And clean them all off. So a damp rag with warm water works really well. That's what I've been using. And you just turn the rag, keep it wet, and make sure you're just not just rubbing on glue from before that you've got clean, clean rag. We will then come back with some diamond files and start cleaning up the fretboard. And since I've already pre-cut and measured all of these, doesn't require as much work. So I started with some diamond files. Didn't work out as well as my custom made tool from before. So Stumac sells these specialized fret leveling tools and I just made my own. I've got a video of that buried deep in the Big D guitar woodworking tool vault. I think I probably posted that video maybe uh, seven, eight years ago. But it's just a fret leveling jig that I can get it flush and then put an angle on it. And stainless steel just takes a little bit longer to do. So if you were just using standard frets, I probably would have been done maybe a half hour ago. But since I need to level these out and get them smooth, it just takes a little bit longer. So then once we know the frets are level on the side, we'll go ahead and start finish sanding the neck. And I've got a new air tool with a two inch pad and that didn't work out all that well. Spent 20 bucks on tool, I don't think I'll be using all that much. And I've got all the different sanding pads which work out really, really well. And I thought this two inch palm sander would work and it really doesn't. So once the neck's been final sanded down, I went up to 320. We're gonna go ahead and finish the fret work. So I know the ends are clean, the neck is sanded down, we clamp the neck to the bench. We're just gonna clean out the slot for the nut real quick. I've got an eighth inch file and I'm gonna drill out one little hole, 16th hole, and be able to chisel it out Make sure it's nice and clean before we finish working on the fretboard. So that one eighth chisel will just go in there and tap it a couple times. And as I get towards the edge, I'm going to come back and then with my nut file, Stumac nut file, just get a nice flush flat bottom channel for my nut. I'm going to put a bone nut in here. And we'll just clean this up, get it nice and level, sand out any of the chips from before. So 
So after we level the files, make sure they're all nice and level, we'll come back with the StuMac diamond crowning file. So when you sand down the top of the frets, it leaves a uncrowned fret so it doesn't have a peak. And this will put that peak back on. That This StuMac tool is really nice to have. And it works well on stainless steel, which is what I'm using here. Kevin likes a dropped C tuning which I have learned even if I've got the fretboard level it needs to be exact. Those C dropped C lower strings flop around slightly and cause a little bit of fret buzzing so if your frets are off you're going to have a problem so I know to level them to make sure they are perfect for him. And we'll read what comments he puts in after this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to tape off the fretboard, and we're going to use coffee, Angela's Leather Dye Coffee. And we're going to get the dye in the truss rod channel, make sure that goes fully in there. Do the headstock. I've got a nice 59 profile. I've got some really cool Angelus coffee going on. This is a really cool color scheme. Once I get this assembled and ready to go, you guys will be surprised. Didn't think it looked this good, but it's going to be right there. So I put on seven coats of True Oil, actually nine coats of True Oil, and I'm going to come back and just clean off the top of the fretboard. I'm going to use some Allison oil to seal it then. I'm not going to put the True Oil on it since it's a closed grain, closed, tightly packed piece of wood. So we'll just clean this fretboard off with some s steel wool and a razor blade. So we'll razor blade clean it off and then come back and just rub it over with some steel wool and we will be assembling the guitar in part five and playing around with it. So thanks for watching guys, we will see you in the next video.